How you doing guys? Today we are embarking on a Wheel Horse RJ35 project. This is a 1956. We only have a couple things to do. It's not mine. It's actually a friend of mine's and if you watch my rug carpet cut videos from time to time you know that this thing's been in the background quite a bit. It was right over there by where my snowblower is. So I, I, this thing's been on the back burner way too long and I need to get this thing going. Essentially, uh, what we have here is an ask for it to be started up, get it running, get it driving. We do have a couple things going on. As you can see, we've got the Clinton Shinaki recoil, not, a, not installed. We have a throttle actuator issue. We need to fix that. We may have to dive into the ignition system. We may have to dive into the carburetor. I don't know at this moment in time. We'll have to assess all that. And then we have a steering issue. Not only do we have a steering issue on the top end, we have a steering issue on the bottom end. So we got to get that straightened out. I think the first thing I want to do is just kind of go over why this one is a 1956 versus a 55 or a 57. So what dates this tractor to 1956? Now I always find it an interesting conversation when I look online or just hear people talking about RJs in general. You know, it's absolutely this or it's absolutely that. There's nothing absolute about an RJ, an RJ35, a 58 or even a 59. They were all built in a garage literally they used whatever parts they had in stock at that point in time you got to remember wheel horse literally wasn't even around until about what 56 or so 57 that's when they went to the wheel horse name so to speak i mean i might not be exact on that but you know wheel horse itself was in its infancy and basically they were making or building RJ35s and that's my senior frame and seniors in a garage by hand. So they're going to use whatever they had in stock at that point in time. So dating one of these tractors can become a little bit cumbersome or misleading, I should say. But in this case, this is a pretty simple age, okay, or dating. And what I mean by that is the frame. The frame is a sheet metal frame. So, so you take it, it's just a piece of, you know, C-shaped sheet metal. That's the frame. And then this is an indicator of 1956 because they only used this for a short period of time because they were having some cracking problems as far as I was told. I don't know if that's 100% true, but in 1956, it was a piece of uh, C-channel frame and in 1957 they went back to the C channel frame and we'll take a look at my 57 in the back in, in the shed so that right there tells me 1956 okay next thing iron steering wheels 55s 56s and I've seen, even seen a couple 57s uh, with this style wheel on it um, you'll see on my 57 it has the plastic 13 inch rim uh, wheel just like a 1958 or 59 we'll take a look at that in a second next thing the hood there's no name this could be 55 or 56 but in this case no name 50, uh, sheet metal frame that would be fairly correct this is probably one of the earlier 56s because it was somewhere later 56 that they started to emblazon the wheel horse on the front of the RJ hood, roughly somewhere right in there, okay? So again, this makes it a 56 and a half, 56 and three quarter, an earlier tractor, sheet metal frame, uh, no name hood, iron steering wheel. We have a small hole for the kill switch, so that would be a toggle switch, not the brass push button. So that would be like later 55 into 56. Okay. So we're, so now we're, now we got 56 frame, no name hood, small toggle switch, iron steering wheel. Okay. All right in that 56 realm. 
we still have a band iron rear hitch, but we have the crossbar. 55 would have a band iron hitch without the crossbar. That's a 56 piece right there. So start to add it up. Sheet metal frame, crossbar on the band iron hitch, iron steering wheel, small toggle switch hole, no name. Okay, so, and um, there will be some other, you know, there's some differences in the seat, but we won't get down that far. Next thing is we can go ahead and kind of date it by the engine. We do have, let's see where we can get, can't see it, but it's actually a 1200, okay? 1200 would be one of the earlier style uh, Clinton motors because we have 1200 there's an a 1200 then there's the b 1290 okay this is a 1200 so this would be the model now we could probably figure it out by the serial number we're not going to get that technical but with the 1200 that would be 55 56 right in there okay and then the a's would come out and then the b 1290s would be later 57 and then 58 59 so the motor tag lends us to that 56 time period Okay, so when we look at the whole tractor overall, okay, it lends itself to be a 1956. Let's go out to the shed and take a look at my 57 real quick for comparisons. For a quick comparison, we'll go ahead and we'll just take a real quick dive on my 57. Now, don't mind the, t the rims and tires. Well, the rims are original, uh, but the tires aren't, so don't look at those. 1957 starts with the embossed hoods of wheel horse. I do have one original 57 decal. The other one's been replaced, but not that that's a telltale sign that it's absolutely a 57, but it's a very good sign. We have the 13 inch plastic rim steering wheel. That's an indicator of a 57. We also have the fully enclosed belt guard. That's a 57 only uh, item. So that is another good indicator that this is a 57. We also have, let me just come around the back side here, see if I can do this smoothly. Um, we do have a sheet metal style rear hitch. That would be, from what I've been seeing, it's from, it's like 56, 57-ish, somewhere right in there. But sheet metal uh, style rear hitch. And then, as you can see, we have the C-channel style frame not a sheet metal frame. So when you add this, oh, and the other thing too, which is interesting, these pulleys, these rear pulleys that start, that are on the jack shaft, they're a little bit smaller on 57. So they actually started in 56, but an indicator of a 57 also. So let me just, let me just quickly walk back out without tripping and falling with all this garbage that I have in my shed. And we can just kind of take a quick overview look from it. So that's how I date, unbelievable, and that's how I date RJs. You got to take the whole picture in. Now, now this engine, now this tractor doesn't have the original engine, so we can't use that. But in general, you have to take a look at the entire tractor, add up all the pieces, and then decide or to your best abilities, figure out what year it possibly is. So as you can see, there are definitely differences between the years in these tractors. It's not 100% gospel that I just provided you. What I basically am just showing you is very high level, the differences between the tractors. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the hood out of the way, get the steering wheel off, and we're going to start taking a look at the motor. We might as well try to get this thing started first before we fix the steering. Okay, change of plans. I was trying to get to the motor right trying to figure I start the motor up first get things going but if you see here <laughs> the uh, steering shaft has a scoliosis so I guess the first thing I'm going to do is fix the steering I just uh, texted the owner of the tractor and said hey look man your uh, your steering shaft is bent and I'm not going to try to straighten this out we have to make a new one and put a new steering shaft in it I'm waiting for him to say yes or no, um, but in general, that's the only way to fix this. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear apart the steering here and 
I guess we'll just work on the steering first. So to get the uh, steering shaft out, which is going to be the first thing, I took the cotter pin and the big three-quarter inch nut that holds the front axle piece out of the way, or just took it off. The next thing I did, if you will take a look here, let's get underneath and figure out what we got going on, right? There is a snap ring that goes right here. I took the snap ring off so I can get this uh, center link out of the way. And the reason why I need to get the center link out of the way is you probably can't see it. We'll see it a little earlier. Well, maybe I can get it in there. Let's see. There's a roll pin. Yes, there's a roll pin right there. That's what holds this steering block to the steering shaft. So I want to get this whole front assembly out of the way. So I'm just going to take my hammer. I took the snap ring off, like I said. Take the hammer, pound this out. That'll swing the link out of the way. And then I can take the whole front end the you know the axle the tires all the steering components out of the way so i can get to that roll pin So as you can see, this steering shaft is bent pretty good. So let's just go ahead and roll it on the floor and <laughs> see if I, I can. So it's in pretty bad shape. I think my first visceral reaction is just to replace it, but I can see it's kinked right there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the vise. I'm going to try to heat this thing up and see if I can get it fairly close, if not pretty straight and kind of avoid the need to go out buy a new one re-drill measure it re-drill it and all this stuff let's see if we can save this So with some gentle persuasion with the torch and then a little bit more aggressive persuasion with my railroad tie and my hammer, I think I got it acceptable. It's not perfect, perfect, but I mean, I, that is more than acceptable. So let me go ahead, clean it up. And let's get this steering back together. This is the steering block that actually goes on the end of the steering shaft and is under the frame. It has to be oriented in the correct manner. One set of corners of the block itself is uh, chamfered, which means the block actually sits in this position. The steering shaft goes through the bottom, the trunnion goes through the top, but it has to sit with these two beveled corners in this position. The other thing we have to keep in mind is the trunnion needs to be dropped in like this with the steering shaft at the bottom. So this whole piece sits like this, okay? With that hole is filled by the steering link right here. So let me go ahead, let me get everything put together, get the uh, roll pin in place, because it came out fairly easy. So it should go back in uh, fairly easy. So let's, uh, Get this all back together and we'll start putting the front end of it back on. So this is a little bit of an awkward spot to work in, um, but we just kind of get the steering shaft in place. We got to get the block in place. Um, we do have to get it up. One of the things I like to do here is take the punch and kind of line everything up so that way you're not really beating the poop out of things to get it lined up. 
Make sure you have your, well, we don't really need the trunnion in right at the second. We can take that out. But in general, make sure that this is all kind of lined up. And then we're going to just gently and hopefully tap this into place. Turn it around. It seems to be solid. I want to give it just a little bit more. There we go. I'm sure that hurt your ears, but, and there we go. The steering block is in place. We can take the trunnion, drop the trunnion in, and now this is ready to accept the front end. Steering system is all back together. Uh, everything is real nice. It lines up real nice. There's no slop in the steering at all. So it's going to steer real nice and solid once I put the steering wheel on. I'm not going to do that until after I get the engine up and running. Um, I've got the snap ring on the, tr on, the, on the steering link that's in place. The cotter pins are in place. The shaft collar here on the steering shaft is back in place. One thing to keep in mind with that, when you, before you tighten that down, move your steering shaft up or forward as high as it can go. So the steering block is up against the frame and then put your steering collar or the shaft collar in place. That way your steering shaft doesn't go up and down because it's being held in place by the steering block and the shaft collar itself. I lubricated everything. When I got the tractor, the steering link wasn't there. It was missing a trunnion. So the steering was basically, uh, you know, non-functional. We got all that fixed. Um, everything, all the pivot points are greased and lubricated. And if I take this, uh, you know, punch and It works real nice. And if I go like this, there's basically no slop in the steering. So this is going to steer real nice and solid. All right, guys, not what I was planning on working on um, on this tractor. I was thinking about doing the motor first, but that bent steering shaft, uh, it just it was just calling out to me. And just so you can see, it is in pretty, I mean, you saw how bad that was bent. That thing is about as straight as it's ever going to get. And we got to save the original steering shaft with all its natural patina to match the tractor. So I think that is a big score. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate all your viewership. As always, it is humbling how many people watch my videos as well as give, give me such nice comments. Uh, over the last couple of weeks or last two weekends, I haven't uploaded a video the reason for that is uh, i was helping my buddy move his parents out of his out of their house and i pulled a muscle in my back right now my back is burning pretty good so i am done for today but anyways my lost is your game thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe and if you could if you do so choose to subscribe and i really appreciate that Please click the little bell so that way you know my videos or when my next video is uploaded. I usually do it on Friday nights at 8 o'clock. I've been pretty consistent like that for years. But because of a minor injury, um, I, haven't, I, I haven't done it the last couple Fridays. So I decided to do it today because I was feeling a little bit better. All right. Thank you, guys. Next up, we're going to tackle that, that Clinton motor. We're going to get it running. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, please come on back. Thank you very much. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, until we do the next project, you have a great day.